Hey, greetings everyone. It is GleeCon, and I'm back with you again with another episode of Lore of Warcraft. On our last episode, we continued our journey through the Dungeons & Dragons campaign setting in, of Dark Faction, the last uh, source book for all of our d and stuff we'll ever cover on this show, unless they make a new, like, 5th edition World of Warcraft. Um, specifically, we read about some prestige classes, the last batch of prestige classes, some interesting ones for Naga and <clears throat> for Scarlet Crusade, stuff like that. We've also been playing through World of Warcraft Classic for quite some time, and on our last one we did our first where I broke, down, broke it down into minis because I have a few people sharing Red Ridge Mountains, and so we did a, a tiny chunk of one with Erator, and we are now going to jump into a full episode with Varrox, so stay a while and listen as we head into the Barrens to continue questing there. Now, old Varrox is going to get to do a full episode because he now gets the barons all to his own. Um, I, I'm in Arathi. I mean, I'm in Orgrimmar. I don't remember why. I probably turned in a quest there or something like that. Um, I am level 23, so I'm not exactly doing anything, but that's okay because I'm sure, yep, we can park right back to the crossroads and then see where we're going to pick up. As you can see, a lot we have a lot of quests that are green. So we'll go ahead and mess around with some of those. Um, we're going to try to come in right about an hour now that we're going to be controlling flow here. <clears throat> so, uh, ahead of us, what do we have? We have a quest in... We have plenty of space in our questy tracker. We have Serena Bloodfeather that we still have to kill. Um, most interestingly, I think, we have Yorn Skyseer, who is going to give us some more quests. So why don't we see, I think we have the flight path there, so let's take a hop, skip, and a jump over to Yorn Skyseer and turn oh, in and get oh. some of the quests Dumb. in Camp Taraho, or at least see which ones are around the same level, because as you can see we have a bunch of little 18, 19, 20s um, that are green for us, so we should start busting those out. Um, we do have this blue leaf tubers, I believe that's a racer friend crawl quest, so the only reason why I'm not even picking it up is because it fills your inventory with two or three different things, and while I do have uh, all of him, he's not like on bag rations the way that half my other characters are. Still, I don't want to mess it up. We have to kill Hezreal Bloodmark. He is a, a pat that goes around the lake in front of Wailing Caverns. We'll do that soon. Um, we have to do the old infamous uh, Mancrix quests where we find his wife and kill a butt ton of Quillboard Tusks, but if we go to Camp Taraho, I believe there are some quests to kill the, those same batches of Quillboards, so we might as well get two with one stone. Um, our other two characters that have been in the crossroads for some time, they're going to be leaving. We have our troll rogue. She is going to head up to Ashenvale on her next episode, and our shaman, our Torin shaman, is going to head over to Stone Talon. So our other characters are going to break. I've already dropped all the, cross, the uh, Baron's quests from their quest log. And all of the remaining quests are going to be just left up to Varrock to finish off. And um, he will eventually make his way over to Thousand Needles. So that's how we're going to break. One, one, and then he's going to fight through the rest of the quests and eventually break his way down because he should be higher level. All right, so first let's go talk to uh, Yorn and turn in the quest that he has for us. And we'll explore Camp Traho because we haven't officially explored well, it. Right. Although we call this land the Barrens, to one who knows where to look. This place teems with life. Greetings, gentlemen. You are here to walk the hunter's path. Very good. Let us begin. Ishamuhale. Ishamuhale, Speartooth, is the fiercest sun scale raptor of the Barrens. He does not hunt for sport, nor for food. He hunts because hunting is his passion. He kills because it is his nature to kill. And you will learn of his nature, Varrock, for your path now follows the talon tracks of Ishamuhale. Begin the hunt, slay his favorite prey, a Zevra, and then bring its carcass to the dead tree northwest of Ratchet. Shamuhale will smell the carcass and be drawn to it, ready when he comes. Go in. So it is near Ratchet. Also, that one which you get the Zevra carcass, he will... There he is right there, but there are Zevra all around, and he... Once you get one, you're on, you, you start to be on a time limit. So we will do that quest um, oh, very soon. Expecting you. And Melor sends word. Varrock, Melor Stonehof has heard of your deeds and has set a path before you. You wish to take it, then go to Thunder Bluff and speak with Melor. 
We'll find him on Hunter's Ride. We shall meet oh, it's sort of a breadcrumb over to uh, Thunder Bluff. We'll do that at some point. We also have been told what to speak with Ruga here? as a warrior. With so let's talk about it. You are here for my trial, Veron. Go in peace. To pass this trial, you must travel south to the Field of Giants. Um, this is a slightly worse shield than the one we currently have. There you will find a host of crawling insect creatures. That's it's questionable, because I would lose a two spirit to gain an extra one strength. They are new to the barons and do not like what they herald. Bring me their still twitching antennae and waste no time, Barak, for harvested antennae will not twitch for long. Bring me the antennae in the time allowed and you will pass the trial. That's a level 20, so we're going to hold off on picking that up because, as you can tell, that's going to be a timed quest. What brings Here's the expert leather worker that says, The blue leather does draw the eye. This is cruel moo, full moon. I know. You see, we have a great many eager recruits running around here, hunting and slaying with more enthusiasm than wisdom. Weird. But must take precaution. <laughs> Then we have an well, expert yes. tailor, Mahani. Welcome to our tent. May I assist you? you wish to and Yanada, who sells tailoring and uh, other working, neither of which uh, is of interest to Varrock. All right, so we have a Skinner trainer drawn. Oh, yeah, I'm not a Skinner. We have a regular horde guard. We have I'm Sanuye Rune Totem, who can sell us some leather stuff that we don't need. We have the stable master. I'm going to keep the. Um, Kelsua. I'm going to keep the Baron's, uh, the Crossroads as my thing for now. Innkeeper Beula. As the winds on the plain, you are welcome here. He sells just random stuff. Food. And as the Tauren like to do, they like to kick a little path out the back, although because we're not in Thunder Bluff or anything, it just opens up to a back balcony where I guess if you got drunk, you could fall off of. That's how they weed out the, uh, Irresponsible Torin from the rest of the Krat tribe. We actually have Tatternak Steelforge chilling back here. It's cool. Roktar. The war chief has instructed me to study all kinds of weapons and armor. He has sent me here to the hub of both the Torin and Orc, Orc cultures and the Barons to meet as many travelers as possible and to learn about the cultures of the Barons. He feels there's something to be learned from even the most pathetic of cultures like the Quilbor or Centaur. Weapons of choice. The razor main quillbores to the south beyond the field of giants have no skilled blacksmiths from what I've told, but they've apparently started to develop sturdier weapons. I'd like to get my hands on a few different types to learn their techniques if possible. If you wish to help bring honor to the horde, then bring me examples of their weapons. Find me a dagger from their stalkers, a wand from their seers, and a shield from their war frenzy. Go that forth. They should do nicely. Uh, that's for down there, so we'll pick it up because why not, but it's not going to be anything we can do quite yet. Meanwhile, across the way, we have a little um, hut here. I don't summon. Um, I'm gonna. They, they just asked me if I wanted to join the buzz at Ancient. I'm okay. I'm not in the mood to mess around with joining a guild right now, so I'm just gonna ignore them. Um, not to be rude, I just don't feel like it. All right, and then we also have the final thing in this quest, in this zone, which is Mangletooth. You, Bork, come here. Time is short and my end is near. Mangletooth shall win, you will see. You, can, my capture, can still aid my people. The Razor Mane tribe is more powerful than the Bristlebacks. The Horde looks to find out who leads the raids on their people. You shall aid Mangletooth in return for the information only I know. Mangletooth can help you, but you must help Mangletooth. Tribes at war. You must strike my enemies. You must help Mangletooth and the remains of Mang by weakening the bristlebacks. Both tribes are very spiritual, tied to the earth and its power. It gives us strength in all things, especially war. If you want to find out who really causes the Thork and the Horde such anguish, then help Mangletooth. You attack the spiritual leaders of the Bristlebacks to the north. Weaken them so the Razor Manes can defeat them and rule the Barons. Okay, cool. That is a level... One, so a little bit past what we're doing. Alright, so what we're going to do now is um, take a little flight over... We do have Lakotamani, which is 22. Um, the Rune Scroll, that's a 25. We have to kill a pack of elites. Owatanka is a 24, so, uh, the Harvester is a 24. We have these various um, drop quests to pick up, 
But uh, they're all a little bit past what we're going to do. We probably won't do the this episode unless we get lucky and we see them. But instead, we're going to fly to Ratchet, kill a Zevra, and then go get um, Ishamu Hali. And then while we're up in that neck of the woods, we'll go ahead and knock out Hezreal Bloodmark. Which I believe is going to open up the level 20 quest uh, counterattack, which is a tough one to solo as a tank. I'm willing to give it the old college try, but I will also put it out there in global chat at that point in time. Um, in the old Baron's chat, hey, I'm going to do cross uh, counterattack because it's pretty tough. It's not that tough to get the uh, mobs that you need to spawn, but they're kind of hard and I they might be elite I don't know it's not considered an elite quest but it should be it's pretty tough uh, I did do this um, I didn't do every single crossroads quest but I have gotten past this I've done all of these all of including that and down to there I think I've gotten all the way down to egg hunt <clears throat> and whichever one spawn out of these chains as well as um, Lokotamani, I did those with Mrs. Gleekon, the Lady Gleekon, um, with our characters, and it's been a little while, it's been a few weeks, because we've been, we, we did Darkshore, and as we know from our time with Chalicea, that's quite a long zone, it took us a long time, and then we played the other night this week, uh, but it's been a little bit of a busy week, a little bit odd, there's just been different stuff, we're getting ready for the 4th of July, um, so we haven't played as much. We've been also doing the, the Tabletop Gloomhaven campaign with my son, so that's been eaten into our game time a little bit, but it's really fun. Um, yeah, the 4th of July is a big deal for me. Um, I just, it's not from any I, I mean I'm not like a veteran I'm not a not, not that I have any I don't have anything against that I'm not going down a political path it's I'm, it's not like uh, that for me growing up from uh, my dad was for some he was just really into he's a welder and um, he was just really into fireworks and no matter what was happening in our life, no matter what was happening, him and my mom split up when, when I was about five. Um, but we would always, whenever he could, he would make the 4th of July a big deal. And he would weld all of these firework launchers, firework guns, mortars, bazookas, little pistols for bottle rockets. And I pretty much have a collection of most of them still. Um, so when I had kids, when my kids were very young, before some of them were born, when they were in diapers and toddlers, uh, we started, the way my house is set up is um, conducive. It's uh, to a, a moderate firework setup. Um, I have enough nature and, and wide space around me that I can do some. Um, and especially back in the day, my town, when I first moved here, was, was not very developed at all. So I was able to put on a little show and I would invite my, um, like my family at large, like my, my sisters and brothers, my parent, my mom, um, my dad, uh, and their kids and stuff. And as, as the families grew and as the years went by, it, the this event just continued to grow. So, what started as I would spend a couple hundred bucks and we would get lots of bottle rockets and, and lots of cheap things. Um, became just a little bit more every year. Um, sometimes family from out of state would come. All right, so if you notice, we've got the carcass, but if you look at the carcass now, it is a 30 minute timer. So now we're ready to go to the dead tree to the Northwest, which is very close. That's why I came this way. Um, so my brother-in-law, he 
liked it a lot, particularly. And as the head of his own household, you know, I have four kids, my sister and he have three kids. Um, similar ages. And as the years went by, he just, he just really grew to love it. And after a few years, he really wanted to contribute by, I wonder if I can use it like it says I shouldn't probably that one like right here. Give it a try. So yeah, there he is. Alright, so um <clears throat> gotta get kind of used to my character. I haven't played him in quite a while. Um Yeah, no problem. We got his fang, so now we're not worried about the time limit on that anymore. Now we can take a little hike over to the Wailing Caverns and find um, Hezreel's head, Hezreel Bloodmark. And we'll turn Ishamahali uh, Ishamahal back in. So after a few years, he started like chipping in. He'd bring a few fireworks and then he wanted to start, after maybe five, six years of, of me doing it and it getting a little bit bigger every year, he started matching us. Matt, he'd, he'd go with me, he'd go shopping with me. Um, and we would, he would like it. Let's, if I spent, you know, 300 or whatever, 200, 300, he'd spend two or 300. Um, so around that time period, the show kind of outgrew my neighborhood. There's more people in the surrounding area now. I do live in like a kind of suburban area. Uh, more development went on, and we started to get calls where. Um, the cops would, would routinely get called on us. So we had a couple years of that, and in around that same time period, he and my sister, because they had they had been renting um, for forever before then, they bought property, and they bought a small little house, but it was on a farm, like basically a farm. that They had a certain number of acres, I don't know, and it's, it's really out in the middle of nowhere. So they have the ability to... do whatever the heck they want. No one's coming out there. They they live like down a kind of country road with three or four other farms and nobody gives a crap at all. Like those, everybody out there, they're shooting guns. They're doing, um, there's, there's, they have the size of the property is big enough that even like the debris is not, um, it's not coming down. It's not affecting anyone's life. <clears throat> We could just go out into the middle of one of the farm fields uh, because they originally bought it so that they could do like strawberry farming um but it turned out their land like really sucked for that and uh the irrigate the drainage of the water was really bad so anytime it would rain it would destroy their crop and then the field just kind of laid fallow and it would start to grow and then it would rain and sometimes this we would go out whenever we do the fourth of july and it's like a swamp. Um, so it was kind of convenient because they're like, all right, well, we'll just start doing it out here. Well, once it got moved to the farm, then over the past like 10 years or so, it has really grown. Uh, now people come from all over and l people are standing in line to, to donate fireworks, to try to be part of the show because originally it was me that did all of the logistics, um, did all the timing, did all the math. Um, I I had a, like, I will coordinate, and I guess you could say choreograph it down very specifically. I, I set the yard in quadrants. I have it written down based on whatever kind of pyrotechnics we have that year. When, when the fireworks are purchased, you know, color is taken, the type of explosion, whether, you know, are we doing, do you want just different things to be, to accentuate uh, different fireworks. So it's not just random like mortars or something willy nilly. Uh, we have different phases of the show. There's highs and lows, there's lulls, there's times for momentum to build. We strategically use everything that you can think of. Like there's a place for a lot of fireworks that you might just blow past, like 
fountains or um, Saturn missile batteries or whatever, little um, larger mortars, but that, that do like shrieks and crackles and their smaller explosions, they all have a place if you pace it right. And if you use your whole sky correctly, um, <clears throat> so as you can um, as you can see, I'm, I got really into it over the years. Um, it got to the point where we would have a small crew, three, four, five of us would be out there. We would we would elect, and if you screwed up, you would not be doing it again. Um, Bobby really became a partner in it, and he's a he's a really that's my brother-in-law. Um, he's a handy guy, so. There's Hezreel, so now I have to wait for the freaking respawn on that. Jeez. Um, so he's good about making when we like if we want to make racks, if we want to do you know screwing a lot of the racks and a lot of the firing material down, making the setting up pallets and and uh, launch pads for us. Um, it's he's a good team and then I'm good about kind of laying it out and organizing it so we, we make a good combo um, where we both kind of can do a little bit of what the other does but we both have our strengths and we're both good at organization and then we have a few guys that are part of the family that have just been tagged on for years and they like to come help and they don't really contribute as much but they they follow orders and you know they listen to do it they do what's asked of them and um, like once you once they saw the first couple, you know, if you it only takes a, a couple people to get banished, and um, so now it's a huge draw. Even my kids that are adults, they want to come, um, and they still, no matter what they are doing in their life, they'll find a way there for the fourth, which is kind of nice as a dad. I kind of like that that it brings my family together. Um, in a way that maybe even stronger than Christmas when they have new people in their lives, boyfriends, girlfriends, romantic, whatever, they, they want to bring them to see, they want to show it off. And now from the negative side, the cost has ballooned. Um, thousands, thousands and thousands of dollars of fireworks get spent, uh, this point in the year, like, if I don't spend at least a thousand dollars, um, and he matches everything that I do, then everyone is, like, shocked, or my, especially my wife, Lady Gleekon, looking at the purse string, she'll be like, oh, you were under a thousand this year, whoa. Um, every year it's a little bit more. We, and sometimes we dress up, we'll wear, like, full 4th of July outfits, hats, um, cover ourselves with LEDs. We do, a, it's a big thing. Um, so I am excited about it. Uh, I've got that set up, so some part of that, the planning, like I said, it takes planning. Getting all the fireworks, um getting together with my brother-in-law to kind of start the things in motion, going down there. He lives about an hour away, so it's a little bit of a hike whenever I go there. But that being said, I'm looking forward to tomorrow. I hope you are too. I hope you have a fantastic 4th of July. I doubt I'll be able to get a video in tomorrow because of that. Um, it's gonna take. That's gonna take up most of my day. I This year I'm also going to be acting as a bartender. Um, I don't really, I'm not a fan of, um, most mixed drinks or, or stuff like that. Anything that has anything sweet at all, um, alcoholic or not, I can't drink. Uh, I don't drink soda. I, I don't really, um, look, now I'm getting invited to another guild. They didn't even give me a whisper. Um, don't really drink juice. I like the taste of those things, I just don't really, don't, um, and if I drink, I don't, like, I don't mix anything, um, but I do like to uh, be a little bit of a mixologist, so I 
have I'm I'm bringing a kind of a mobile bar with me, um, and I'm gonna have a lot of pre I'm gonna pre mix a lot of like high end cocktails in jugs and label them and then have all the accoutrements, garnishes and salts and everything uh, made up beforehand. I'm gonna make like a, I'm gonna make like a grapefruit tequila kind of a drink and then I'm gonna make like a, a grapefruit reduced salt um, just as a for instance so I've got some work that'll between that and getting all the fireworks finished up and loaded up getting all the, the welded munitions the pistols and the bazookas and the, the, the there we go there's our guy Getting all that taken care of. Um, take a bit. But I'm looking forward to it. I think it'll be fun. Um, I hope you guys are safe. I hope everybody comes back with the same amount of uh, hands and toes. And <laughs> Come on, don't run, bro. Don't be a little buster. Oops, I didn't do that. Yeah, so I'm high enough to level that this is. I can take all three of them on. And it's not a big deal. Oh, look, that guy just came in and kind of assassinated him from behind. Thanks, bro. Give him a little salute. Okay. So let's go turn in Hezel's head. We killed him. Um. Not a lot of fanfare. Basically, he's walking around. A lot of uh, a lot of the times, you can just end up killing that guy while you're waiting for a group to form for Wailing Caverns. Um, if you have to hunt him out, you're above level like mine. So give yourself three, four levels. Some decent gear. Once you start getting blues, like we have right here with our sword, um, he's got a couple other blues. I think we got a belt. Yeah. Um, then you start to become in good shape. Should I hoof it over the mountain? Might actually save us a little time. Chuck Norris, don't dial the wrong number. You answered the wrong phone. There you go. Baron's chat for you, bringing Chuck Norris back too. Uh oh. I really thought I could climb this particular spoke of the mountain. I suppose not. All right. Um, yeah, so I think I liked so far. I mean, it's early. I liked the mini version where I broke that down. Um, don't remember what time it started. Actually, I think I uh, texted. Okay, so we're already about 30 minutes in. That's just waiting for old Hezreel to spawn, slowed us down, and that's okay, because now Barok is just living his own life, doing his own thing. Um, lovely. This will give us no XP. Love that. Whatever. Um, he's in good shape, though. I like him. Um, I don't love to... I mean, I think that's my favorite part of retail is in its current, and I'm talking about dragon flight only iteration, is they've made it to where the leveling experience is smooth regardless of your spec, and it's not so out of this. I'm also really looking forward to when I do Burning Crusade Classic and Wrath of Lich King Classic and Beyond totally changing the style so there's never any off-camera action and we just follow a couple characters smoothly throughout the whole experience i think that would be fun i think i'm gonna even just um even from the beginning even when i go to do some redundant content i'm just gonna keep the videos going mother was arrested for carrying oh, okay it's, i get it it's a chuck norris joke 
His mother was arrested for carrying a concealed weapon when she was pregnant because she was pregnant with Chuck Norris. Maybe Chuck is a concealed weapon. Ha ha ha. Good one. Good one, Baron's chat. Cockin. Good joke, Cockin. Alright, so I'm going to go ahead and put it out there in the old Baron's chat. As soon as I pick the quest up, that I'll be ready to roll on counterattack if anyone wants to try. And then we will fly. Actually, while we're up here, you know what? We might as well get Serena Bloodfeather's head, too. Why not? We're geographically closer than we're going to come again. We have our duties, warrior. Is Hezreal defeated, Verok? Uh, we got a ring. Three agility, one stam. I guess that's better than my... Volcanic rock ring. I commend you, Verok. These centaur are undisciplined and cannot focus their rage as the orcs can, but they are fierce nonetheless. Defeating them, your valor is proven. The horde commends your success against the Kolkar, but the Kolkar themselves are maddened. I have reports that a contingent of Kolkar has traveled to the barons from their home in Desolus to seek vengeance. My latest report was that even now they move against these bunkers from the west. Face the Kolkar invaders and end their threat in the barons. Kill them until their leader, Warlord Kromzar, appears. Defeat him and bring me a piece of his banner. Great. Alright, beware, Varrock. Look to the west on it, bro. Um, I don't... This 17 back armor with the 3? Uh, actually, an upgrade as well. I just can't see it. Okay. Let's do this. Um... Just look to the west. Okay, so I am headed out to counterattack. When this down, I do see that's a regular human. These are just you gotta be real careful that we don't do anything dumb. I'm gonna just help these guys out. Are we gonna do anything cray cray? Who said that? Someone said time to die. See, this is what you gotta be careful on. I want no part of... I mean, they're low level, which is great, and we... There... Oh, here he is! Warlord Crumbs are right here! Oh, man. I didn't realize. Um, at least I got some help. Maybe that's why it's a... Okay. Where'd he go? Oh, he's got a helper. Oh, my gosh. I'm gonna die, for sure. I don't have any potions. So that was bad. He's coming for me, for sure. Okay, he ran off. Okay. Use a little bit of that. He's there, he's being hurt. Maybe if I get the Stormer... Ah, okay. I can't do that yet. Okay, we'll get him. He's going right for me. Let's see what we got. Get that. Just keep going with that. Get with some more of that. Just keep that going. I will try and hit him. More blocks where I can. Ooh, I did it. That was close. I definitely. That's why it's um, not a helper, because you can use them as helpers. We got a piece of his banner. We did it. It was close, but we survived. I'm a great druidy. Nobody responded to my calls, but that's okay. Um, 
All right, so that was one done. Nice. So that means we finished Ishamohale. We did uh, Hezreel's head. We're now getting counterattack turned in. Sub sub. You have the banner. You have done it. You have defeated the Kolkar. I will be sure Thrall receives word of your actions, Herrera. Stand tall. You do yourself in the horn. Go proud. Honor. Cool. Absolutely, man. Um, happy to help. Now we're gonna let's go kill Serena while we're up here. Um. Again, not super duper hard. I don't know who La Lantiga is. Me busy. Leave me, me alone. Busy. This was a sign of a great battle. Any great battles. Okay, so it's kind of over now. Um, I don't want to pull off the cloaks. Alright, so there's a silver vein. Heck yeah, I want that. Uh, the problem with Serena Blood Fe Feather is that she's going to be deep inside that harpy territory, so... We're gonna have to fight our way in. Um, still a little bit outside of the comfort. Like I'm not. We're not waiting for a hearth either. So after we turn this in, um, should be able to buy back. I don't even need this physics. I'm not going to Stone Talon. But whatever, I guess it's not do I, I, I'm fine on the space, but um, Ishamuhale might open up another quest for us. Um, we're about 25 minutes or so, we're a little bit past the halfway point, so. And I promised I would just not be blathering on about non world Warcraft stuff, and look what I have done. Spent the whole time talking about fireworks, toot my own horn. Um, double. Uh, I have been enjoying this game, like I like classic. I am looking forward to going and doing the other classic, the Burning Crusade. I wish there was a server. I did notice, if you guys didn't notice, there was a there's a hardcore server that's out now. Um, because it doesn't really apply, it's basically they've added their own mod on to classic, and it doesn't add anything to the lore. It's if we're looking at a timeline, like it's not technically coming out after Dragonflight. Um, it's not like a re-release or anything. It's basically Blizzard taking the bull by the horns and saying, okay, everybody does this anyway. And it's it's taken the one RP server that we had, turned it into that. And um, why not give the people what they want, much as they've done with everything along the way. This is not like new territory for Blizzard they do this all the time they find they notice something that the community wants such as a looking for group channel and they for the most part they incorporate it within their system even better because it's part of their system instead of being a mod and I'm hoping I'm curious about the hardcore I would be I would be willing to attempt it um, again, that's probably something I'm going to do on the side, not as part of our main journey, maybe at the end, maybe upon request, uh, maybe once we finish lore, and if we get to a point where I've done all the side non-sequential lore I can think of, like, we still got so much to do, I don't know when that would happen. Because um, after we've got D&D, &D, we have a weird little aside where I'm going to read couple little books um, probably aren't going to be that exciting but they might be interesting before I get into the next big project which will be at least as long as this Dungeons and Dragons one was it, and it should be interesting um, at least as long and probably more interesting the Dungeons and Dragons thing was ultimately just a curiosity and only because it was endorsed by Blizzard in in the con you know in the time period when World of Warcraft was coming out, um, you know, in the case of the Warcraft, the role playing game, when that was coming out, um, did I feel like we could find some nugs? And honestly, we did. We did find some nugs. Some endorsed by Blizzard. Semi-canonical nugs. 
mean, to be honest, even some of the things that are canon aren't canon anymore, so. There we go, look at that. I wish I could taunt from further away. It's melee range is the dumbest thing. Why would you make a melee range only taunt beyond me? Hey. Now that I realize Thunder Armor is what you're supposed to be doing, like I feel like a fool the way I've tanked before, because I was like, oh, you can just spam bloodlust and blah blah blah. No, you need to just be tabbing and using Thunder Armor. And I will tank better in the future. Alright, we got Serena's head. That was actually way easier than I thought. We just had to kill a few greys to fight our way back there, but no sweat. And we are not even close. We still have 21 minutes until the Hearthstone's available. Which means that we've got about 15 to 20 minutes left on this episode until we can be comfortable cutting. Um, but, I, you know, anytime we can complete three, four, five quests, we're in good shape, and we have completed Ishamuhale, we completed the Herzl, we completed Counterattack, that's three right there, now we've got Serena's, that's four, so, and we've got definitely time for one more, um, at least, so, that's pretty good, to get done five to six quests in a, an hour, that's, uh, not, not this norm for Warcraft Classic. I mean, they're green. That's part of it. Bash them good. You bash them good, girl. I mean, it's fine. Seems like she bashed them good. Now, the downside of the 4th of July. One, an hour away. I gotta drive an hour there and an hour back when the road's crawling with cops, um, which is a pain in the butt. Um, I usually find myself sort of in a designated driver type of situation because I, like, I might have a beer or two throughout the course of the night. Um, I don't like to drink heavily while I'm prepping, coordinating, and executing the fireworks show because I don't want to freaking blow my face off or my hands off. My hands, I, my face, fine, whatever. I'm married, my wife will have to just put a bag on my head or whatever, but I'm well, I'm way past, there's, I'm past the point in my life, I'm not getting on Tinder, I'm not going to a singles bar, it's not happening. It's, that ship has sailed. Um, me and Lady Gleekon, and if, you know, tragedy struck or whatever, then, uh, I don't even, I'm to that, I'm starting to get to the age where it's, I don't even know what is worth the effort anymore, you know? So I'm not, I'm less worried about that, but if I lost a hand, oh man, I couldn't game. Well, I would be, I mean, I would, I would come, I'd be completely changed. I'd have to change my life. I'd have to completely change my life. Um, like I could try and it'd be like if you were like a coffee drinker and you could only drink decaf or if you were like a beer drinker and now you just drink non-alcoholic beer or whatever. You had to just suddenly kind of game on things that had one-handed accommodations. I, I mean, a humongous bummer. Um, and I think it would be so hard for me. I think I would, I'd have to fig, I'd have to find joy in things other than gaming, which I, which is fine. I've gone through periods in my life where I couldn't game, um, just because of like finances and logistics. And there's plenty of joy to be had out there. I'm not saying that I couldn't, I, I could change my life. But also even my job, like uh, to do my job with one hand, very hard. I do a lot of, um, there's a big programming element to my job. Um, there's a humongous social element to my job. And there's, uh, while no one would admit it, there's a, there's a stigma if you've got one hand. Um, to all my one-handed listeners out there, uh, 
I'm not telling you anything that you don't know. I I have I I work with someone that has one hand that blew their other hand off with a firework uh, a few years back, and um, I I I like the person, and, but I'm candid, and they are candid with me. Um, so it would be hard, but I, you know, I mean, I guess in it, it'd be hard in that same way. Like, imagine if you could never use your phone or whatever. Like, there's just certain things. Like, yeah, that, it would be hard, but you would also. What do you? I need? think if you're forced to, there's a. There could be a, and this is funny consider you know considering my platform that I'm speaking on is like a, I'm, I'm literally trying to get subscribers and views to watch me play a game and talk about a game so that I could... I mean, I could still make the lore episodes. I could still do that, but without the idea of ever being able to play the game too. It's tough. I guess I could rig it. I could, I could program my mouse. I could probably play the game. Especially if I had, like, a partner. I guess I would make it work. I could... <laughs> Blood and thunder! You're not getting anything until I see Serena's head. <laughs> yeah, well done, Barak. Very well done. That's worse than what I have. I wasn't sure you were up to the task, but you proved yourself quite the cutthroat. Thanks again for helping us suppress the harpy epidemic. Here is a reward. You did well. Letter to Jinzil. You've done so well for me, Varrock. You're a regular lucky rabbit's foot, and there's something I want you to see. Harpies are not from around the barrens. They come from a place called Stone Talon, far to the northwest of here. But it's probably a dangerous place for you. I need this letter delivered to an old friend of mine who lives there. A witch doctor by the name of Jinzil. You'll be happy to know that Serena Bloodfeather is dead, and I think you'll find Stone Talon an interesting place. Oh, well. Alright, well, that's a tough one, because... Well, I guess we'll have to, when we're done with this whole zone, we'll go ahead and walk our butt over to Jinzil. Let's read the, the letter right now, in case I forget. Actually, we will read it as we fly back down to Camp Taraj. <gasps> Tarajo? Taraji. What do you need? I need a ride. That's what I need. Camp to Rajo. Alright, let's read this letter. Jinzil, it's been a while, but I thought you would like to know that the last of the blood feathers have been slain. Don't thank me, though. The person delivering the letter is the slayer. If you'd like, I can have her head delivered to you after the caravan makes its rounds to the barons. I know you like that sort of stuff for your voodoo magics. Take care, old friend. Darsok Swift Deck. Okay, cool. So we have essentially, I think what that's signifying is we finished the crossroads. And all of the quests, uh, aside from Man Crick, we've got to go back and turn some Man Crick stuff in. Uh, pretty much everything that we have now is is to the south. Um, and in reality, we probably should have finished that at least with um, Moln because he's going to be. Traveling the Stone Talon, but that's okay. We'll still drop that quest off so that we've technically completed it on camera. Um, let's see what he has. I think we could run out. We could either look for Lakota Manny. That might be... We could also look for Mancrick's wife. She's right there. We could do that. But then I also want to kill the... I want to do the Consumed by Hatred before we turn that in too, so I'm a little bit less high on that. Let's see. I think he gives us another... Hunting quests, and that's really what I think we're primed to do, is go ahead and hunt them. In the meantime, if we catch any other guys out, cool. Alright. Hail. Barak, have you bested a Shamuhale? Hey, merely a token, but what it represents is profound. How would you know it? Your Shamuhale's strength is in you, Barak. You use it with temperance. That is your burden. That is your honor. Enraged Thunder Lizards. Now, Varrock, you must face the great Thunder Lizards. So large are the beasts. The ground rumbles as they stump across the plains. I think we need five of their lightning glands, too. 
Take care as you fight them, for one false step and you may find yourself beneath their feet. You will find the thunder lizards in the southern barrens, and earn a storm snouts, storm hides, and thunderheads. Turn to me after your best battle. I freaking will, my friend. Level 18? That's nothing. Alright, let's do it. Um... Yeah, it's like literally right to the south. So this is perfect. This is perfect finish. And I hope that... Oh, we have another... Let's... Ashenvale hunt. Oh, so he wants us to go to Ashenvale. I guess we'll we'll pick it up and we'll drop that off too. Oh. Your strength impresses me, Warrior. Your willingness to embrace the hunt gives me confidence that you could move on to the bigger game and pick challenges. Forests of Ashenvale represent a vast, untamed wild that the Horde seeks to impose its own will upon. Both politically and spiritually, you seek to prove yourself in an unproved land. Seek the guidance of Sanani Thunderheart and Splinter Tree Post. The outpost is due north of the path leading from Paris. I think that Ashenvale Hunt is also the name of the quest you get from the Crier in Orgrimmar. Well, in all the capitals. So I wonder if this is just yet one more place you could get that breadcrumb. They really want you to get Ashenvale. Your horde, they're pushing you in that direction. And we will, with Talanji. And with um, Chalice here. All right, here we go. Here's our first Thunderhead. Um, it says he gives us thunder, but we also need Lightning Gland. Why it's not saying that we can get Lightning Gland from him. Is he not lightning land friendly? Oh, I'm too far away. His hitbox is... Or his size is so big it masks the size of his hitbox. We only need three of their blood, so... Maybe the Thunderhead or not. Are we good? Um, let's check it out and see. Down there it says Lightning Gland. I see. So these won't give us that Lightning Gland that we need. Gotcha. I mean, he seems like he's mostly like using Lightning on me. I don't know if I should be trying to. Let's see if that. So our life is going down kind of at a moderate clip. I wonder if we keep the shield up. Will it, will it be better for us in the long run? I like to keep that up. Um, I enjoy it. Oh, just going. I mean, I don't know. It seems like the fact that he's using um, lightning is a little bit. I guess I could. Well, he doesn't really. Like, yeah, I guess. Yeah, I could shut him up with that. And bust the block, so he's got to stick to. Um, he's got to stick to. There you go. Shut him up again. Okay. That seems to be helping. Cool. We got our first blood. First blood. This will be the last quest that we do. Um, I think by the time we get two more blood, we'll easily be within our five minutes. I like this. Um, I like shutting them up. Oh, I must have missed the timing on that one because it's still going. Butt sniffer. Wait, see. We gotta be timing it just right. Got our second blood. So the drop rate's not that bad. Um, there's Owatanka. I don't know what Owatanka is. Keep an eye out for that. He's not the first in the. Uh, I think I missed. Uh, missed the timing. Yeah, I can snatch it. Using my um, my stone either. 
got a thunder lizard tail. Delicious. Let's cook that bad boy up. Actually, I don't think this character can cook. Varrock is not a cook. If anything, cook is not one of them. That time I'm pretty sure I got him. Nope, I missed. Good night. That time it looks like I did. Uh, it seems like it like dispels. You can see the electricity dying on there. There you go. We already got the free blood that we need. Not too shabby. Unfortunately, this wasn't a spot for us to get our lightning glands. We'll have to hunt for that later, which is probably why that quest is a higher level quest. Now, there is the harvester. I don't know what that is. Um, I don't even remember. I don't think I even got that with my character. We do need... Um, Thunderhawk saliva glands, but it doesn't seem like that one has it. There's another Chen's empty keg. I don't know who Owatonka is. What kind of creature he is, rather. But I'm not going to hunt him too hard right now. Oh, I'm kind of fucking late. Alright, not too shabby. Pretty productive. We're, get, we're close. We're getting close to leveling up. Considering we just grind round out green quests. Not too bad, but we pushed forward with things we haven't seen on any other character. Um, we we kind of cleaned up some of our northern barren stuff, pretty much the last of it. My, minus Man Crick, which is sort of sending us out there. Um, we do have some, some journeys to make to Mulgore and stuff like that. Uh, maybe I'll fly over to Mulgore off camera, and then we'll start there by turning it in and flying back. Or not. As I what brings you here? Are oh, the Thunder Lizards defeated, Verrock? It's good to see you return with proof of victory, and it's good to know that you have done so with your bones. Cry of the Thunderhawk. The Thunderhawk, Verrock, it's a fierce beast. It's time for you to face them. You must find where it roams and bring me its wings. It's proof of your successful hunt. Do this, and your time with me will near its end already. Tom, if you will already be near its end. Be careful. He gives me a, a buckler, but it's on par with the other bucklers. Trial of the Field of Giants. Um, that one is one that we're going to team up with Silithid Eggs. Silithid Eggs. Um, let's find the inn right here to log out at. And um, guess what, guys? I had a great time. Thank you so much for watching and for tuning in. I hope that you enjoyed it and I will absolutely be looking forward to the next time that I see you guys after the 4th. Have a great 4th of July. I hope you have as much fun as I will. And I'll see you next time on Lore of Warcraft.